uh, you see here is different, and I'll see if I can get in here again. Uh, come on. Yeah, let's go back there. Good. Uh, what you see on the calculator screen and what you see on your graph paper is different. So you have to read the points off the graph. There. We'll see. <laughs> okay, Michael, did you do this one? And you press trace. And there's my first point. Yes? How do you get the, the you, That's a different kind of calculator. You really have to stay. There's the other one I was looking for. You need to stay with the uh, yellow ones. Now, Michael has a calculator. Did you not bring it? Where's your 84 calculator? You have one of your own. Oh. You can come up here and do it. But we're just going to do this because we got to keep moving on. And then... If you trace it, I picked a nice window so that if you, I think I want to do that. <laughs> I picked a nice window so that if I trace on this, hang on. Like this, and oh, see, now I'm in fraction mode, so I don't even like that. But let's get whole numbers. And there it is, 1, 1. And I asked you to do that, and there's a relationship here. So this was at 0, 0, and this was at one one and you graph this but you want to graph it on the scale i provided unless you want to change your scale now i gotta stop and do this <gasps> oh that was off that's okay so if you're missing some of those and then we're going to fill in this sheet and maybe we could, you might have some questions on some of the ones with some fractions in them did you I'm just reviewing what we did. And so then you plot this point here. Let's see if that works now. That's much better. And you do this. So what's the slope? Now mine's kind of short. It's 1. You went over 1, up 1. Could you use slope formula to do that? Yes, you could. The y-intercept is where this line crosses the y-axis. And my graph's off a little bit because the board was off. But that's at 0. Zero. There's a connection between these numbers and the equation of that line. Now, we have been looking at slopes. We haven't really been doing equations of line, George. Yeah, no, iPads are not out at all. Headsets are not out. Okay? Nick at least does not have his iPad open. We don't need them out. Okay, Elias? You're not to have your iPad out even. Okay? So let's skip ahead to one of these that's a little harder. Which Did you have problems with anyone in particular? What about this negative 2 thirds x plus 2? That would be number 5. Have you, did you do that one? Yeah. Gabe doesn't have anything because I don't know where your stuff is. Did you guys have questions on this? Can you just give me answers or do I have to do it? I can do it. This is why, this is number five. I picked it because it's a little bit harder. Okay, I can do it as long as I can get to my calculator here. <laughs> oh, wait, sometimes if I do this. Nope. I've got a little exercise today. Headsets off, please. And there are a lot of fun things you can do with the calculators. Yeah, and if I had my Inspires, it would be a lot better. Because there are even more wonderful things I can do with that calculator. There is now an app for that. By the way, if you're going to buy an 84, they are now out in color with a rechargeable battery. Oh, these batteries eat batteries, so the rechargeable battery is great. It's negative two-thirds X. Now, the prob sometimes the problem is entering it. I'm going to clear that out. Some of you had problems with the negative sign. It's this little negative. It's not that one. This is a subtraction. That's a negative sign. So it's negative and because order of operations works, I don't need parentheses. Negative 2 thirds x. So it's going to take negative 2, divide by 3, and then multiply that answer by x. So the x is not in the denominator. If it were, I'd have to have parentheses there. So I don't need parentheses. That's why you guys got lucky when this one worked. Plus 2. And we press graph. You guys get that? Clear picture? Paris, did you do it, get this far? But you can do it right now. That's why I'm doing it. And we'll do a trace. And 
it starts at zero two. I'm gonna take a picture of this. Oh, I can see. You can't do that. Actually, you, uh, with the Inspire app, you could do it. That'd be one of the plus pluses for that. So point A is at zero two. I didn't even have to graph it. That's cheating, isn't it? <laughs> but with the new Inspire app, you could do that yourself because it will go on the iPad. But not this year. So that's the way that goes. Now let's find another nice point. I don't want fractions, okay? So you should, you have zero, two, you should graph it. And it always starts at zero, which is really kind of nice. Sometimes it's not going to be a nice number. And let's go down until we come up with numbers that are not fractions or decimals. Well, that one works on the X, but not on the Y, doesn't it? Okay, Michael? Pay attention. You're supposed to be sitting up here anyway. Anyway, we're going to go a little bit further. I should be able to find it. Again, now the Ys worked there, but the Xs didn't. Now, it's okay. I'm hoping I find a nice one. Did anybody find a nice one? Three should work. Why does three work? Yeah, why does three work? That should be a good question. Oh, I'm going to put this one down here. So three, zero. Can you do slope formula? You tested on this. I think you can. You were pretty good with that. What's the slope going to be, Michael? So I'm going to start here and draw my little triangle. This is what? What direction am I going? Down. Down. How many? Two. Two. Can't jump over here. You got to follow the paths. And this is going to the right. Three. Three. Which goes in the? Which is the top number? That's the biggest problem we have. Three. Michael, which is the top number? The negative two or the three? three. That's a good guess. But the is I want the rise, the vertical over the horizontal. So it's negative two over three. And I, I'd like to think of it this way. I was, I was trying to think of a way to help you remember it's y over x. Think of this as kind of falling down. And if you think about this, have you ever seen sawhorses or ironing boards? It kind of looks like cable legs. The x holds up the y value. I don't know if that'll help. I can't think of another way to help you remember it's the rise over the run. Okay, Gabe? It's the y over the x. Now, what's because that's where we're going to make mistakes. And we make mistakes all the way through math, by the way. All different levels of math have that issue. Even on the AP exam, I saw it there as a reader because I grade the AP exam. Okay, Jake? I saw the students doing it upside down. So don't feel bad if you do it upside down. It's easy to do. Once in a while, I do it upside down, too. Okay, Merdis, what's the y-intercept? That's this point right here. Y-intercept is where my line crosses the y-axis. Where is that? Michael, do you know where that is? I have it up here. Zero, two. Now, do you notice anything special about the equation? Is there any connections to this? I gave you a bunch of problems to look at. Is there anything that's the same there? Marie. Whoops. The slope, well, not the first number, because what if I had this? Why if I, what if I had this? 2 minus 2 thirds x. What's the slope? She's close. She's very good about saying it's a number. There's no letters in slope. Ever. Okay? So if you can remember that, that's going to help later on in more math, if you have to take more math. So the slope is the negative 2 thirds, isn't it? So it's not my first number. It's the number that's what? That's the fraction. No, it could this could be a fraction too. It's good those are good guesses though. Well, let's fill in this little chart. Let's fill in our chart and let's see what we come up with. It has X. It goes with X, that's right. Okay, do you guys know the word for the number that's multiplied times X? It's from Latin. You get a little Latin lesson here. Coefficio. 
coefficient. That this is the word it comes from, and it's coefficient. There's a lot of Latin in the English language. I believe 70%. I studied Latin for five years in high school. Okay, it's grade seven through 12. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't spend five years in high school. Sometimes it feels like that, but. And so that's the coefficient of x. It's the number we multiply by x, multiplying. And you can have your notes on your quizzes. That's the slope. Another language lesson, oh, we've had this before. Do you remember? We're going to call it m. Oh, maybe we haven't had this lesson. That means slope. You guys have seen that, right? Do you know what m stands for? It stands for, it means slope, but it comes from the French word monter, which means to climb. So uh, anybody climb a mountain here? <laughs> they're kind of fun, but they're hard work. And you're going to work, you're going to be thinking about rise over run. The gondola? The gondola? I suppose, because you still have to go up the slope, right? The mountains are, can be very steep. So slope, that's the reason why they use M, because this is from the French word, monte. And we'll get the y-intercept in a second. And the y-intercept is what? There's another number here. There's this number right here. Guess what? That's the y-intercept. That's the y-coordinate. And we call that letter B. And some of you know this. So this is going to be B. And that actually comes from base. Again, French from the bottom, the base. Here's what I use for B. It's where you begin. So we're going to be graphing lines using slopes and intercepts. We've already done it. We've done, used a slope in any point. <coughs> you've always you've graphed lines. You did very well on that quiz. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. So there's a little chart here. There it is. And I actually have two slides for it. And what was the slope? We should, we should fill in this chart. It's the last second last page. So we have to go back and forth. And since I don't have the answers up there, you're going to have to do the work. So we said the slope and the y-intercept, the slope was 1 and the y-intercept was 0, 0. Because I think you'll see the patterns here. What was the slope on problem 2? And the y-intercept was? Okay, Alex, you okay with that? Y-intercept is 0, 3. It is an ordered pair. It is a point on the graph. This measures the steepness. They are not related at all but they have x's and y's in them. That's uh, their relationship. Mardis, did you get this one done? The What's the slope? The no. One it's one half. And your y-intercept would be? Zero. No, it's zero, negative one. And you're right. It's going to be the y-coordinate, but the x-coordinate is always zero. But I want you to see that. Hence, the reason for making you write it as an ordered pair. How about this one? What was the slope for this one? Josh, did you get this done or not? Did you graph it? Uh, no. Alex, how about you? Did you get this one graphed? It's negative, it's negative 1. And where is the y-intercept? This graph looks like this. It's 0, 0. Remember, keep in mind what negative slopes look like. If m is negative, the graph's going to do that. If m is positive, the graph is going to do that. I would have that written down in my notes because you guys get them all mixed up. Because you know what? I could just subtract the y's and subtract the x's and look at the picture and figure out what, if it's positive or negative. Oh, we just did this one. This was negative 2 thirds, and the y-intercept was 0, 2. What's the slope on this one? Michael? Three over one, or just three, but it's the same thing. And what's the y-intercept then? Zero, negative four. What does it mean to solve an equation? 
I'll slide that back down for you. Is that far enough? Okay. If we want to solve, first off, you can't solve an expression. You have to solve an equation. You can't solve a phrase, but you can solve a problem. Okay, Michael, what does it mean to solve? We've done this before. We need to do it again. Because if you know what solve means, you can do anything. Not simplifying. I'm going to solve. First off, I have to have an equation. So x plus 3 equals 7. And I'm going to claim that I solved this, which is the process of finding out what that is. But what does it mean? I'm going to say x equals 3. Did I solve that correctly? Eve, did I solve that correctly? And some of you are new, so this is going to be new for you. You do it all the time. You solve equations all the time. Okay, Jake? Is that right? No, why not? Murray? I don't understand. I still can claim three is my answer. That's how you solve. It's a way to solve, but what does it mean to solve? Well, that's a process. What do you mean? Why do I care if I want to get x by itself? I want to find, why is this not tr working? I almost said it. Why is that not solved correctly, Chad? Don't have to do any steps. I could, I could do get x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3, x equals 4, x equals 5, and eventually I will solve it by trial and error. Pardon? Ted's got it. If you put this back in here, it doesn't make a true sentence. So anytime you're asked to solve, can you always do guess and check? Absolutely. But some things are complicated. I want to find the number or numbers, because there could be more than one, that make the sentence true. Okay, so when I graph these, y equals x, let's take an easy one. What number or numbers make that true? What can you put in for x, and what else would put in for y so that these would be equal? If I put in x equals 0, what's y? Zero. 0. If I put x equals 1, what's y? 1. one. x equals, how about 1 half? Okay. 1 half. There's a problem here, isn't there, Michael? Yeah. Can I list all the numbers that make that true? I don't know. I don't live to in eternity. How many numbers make this true? How about a negative 1? X is negative 1. You give me a number, I can give you a Y. Is there ever going to be an end to that? No. So what do we do? We draw a picture. That's what this graph is. This is a picture of the solutions. Well, I could ask my upper level students and they don't know that because they, they just do it. They know how to do the math. And this is a picture of all the numbers that make the sentence true. Well, guess what? Not just those integers make it true, but all of these numbers on the line make it true. Okay? So when I substitute in this value here into my equation, it had better make that true. Which one's the y coordinate? Which is the y coordinate here? Remember, it's alphabetical. That one I can help you with. So it's negative 4. Is that equal to 3 times 0 minus 4? Is that a true statement? What's 3 times 0? That's 0. What's 0 take away 4? No, it's not positive 4. It's negative 4. So minus 4 equals minus 4. Didn't that make a true statement? Yes. Could you just guess and check numbers to see which ones work? Take you a while. Or we can use the fact that we know what the slope is and we know what the y intercept is. So let's summarize this. I think I have it on the last page. What's the relationship between the slope and the equation? This is mx plus b. Is there anybody here that hasn't seen that? I think you've all seen that. Am I correct? Y equals mx plus b? It's called slope intercept form.
by the way, with the calculators, they do drop them a number of times before they ship them out. Because you guys drop calculators, I drop calculators, it's called a drop test. And they, if, it does, if it fails, then they can't ship them out. Because they know everybody's going to drop their calculator. Gravity kind of gets in the way sometimes, doesn't it? Okay, M is the slope. Remember, that's the rise over the run. And how does that relate to the equation? We're about ready to go into the new stuff. So if I have y equals negative 2x minus 1, what is the slope? Negative 2. It's the number multiplying, we won't use that big word coefficient, but that's what it is, multiplying x. That's what I want you to get out of this assignment. Some of you will say the number in front of x. I don't care. But also keep in mind, it's a number. It's always a number. You guys know that symbol for number? What is the relationship between the y-intercept and the equation? This is the y-intercept. What number is that? That's the constant, right? So that's b. What's the relationship there? It's the constant, which is a number, that is added to the x term, added or subtracted to x. Some of you may have better ways to state this. It's just where I'm at right now. <laughs> okay, it's a constant. Could be a fraction, but it's really an ordered pair. It's 0, comma, b, ordered pair. So the question is, how can we use this quickly to graph our line? So let's take that one I just did. And I know this was hard because you've never done anything quite like this in this in my class and maybe in other classes where you've had to try to generalize some things. Okay, Nick, do you know what the slope is here? It's the number that multiplies x, negative 2. What's the beginning point? What's the y-coordinate? Negative 1. Okay, I'll just make a little sketch because I don't care that much. I could bring in a graph here. Maybe I should bring in a graph. That would be better, I suppose. It'll just take me a second to get it down here. Now, it's called a Cartesian graph because it was named after the French mathematician Descartes. You know, Americans, we didn't, when did we, when did we become, you know, a country? 1776. These guys were doing this math in the 1600s, 1400s. So we don't have Americans that get any credit for math for that long ago. We do today, but not from a long time ago. Descartes was doing this back in France. Okay, I still like the way I figured this one out. After 30 years of teaching, I it didn't come up with this until just about two years ago. B stands with where you begin on the y-axis. We have to remember the B beginning is easy, but then you put it in the wrong place. I'm going to begin on the y-axis. So that's this one. So that's negative 1, right? And this is the slope. Can you guys write slope as a fraction? It's negative 2, but it's what? Negative 2 over what? One. And remember how to graph? You've been doing all this, right? What do we do? No? Remember, it's y over x. This is your foundation. Do you want to do the, the x's or the y's first? I don't care. Down, down 2 and over 1. It's a staircase. Go down 2, over 1. Down 2, over 1. Whoops, I'm off my graph there. And there it is. It's called quick graphing. There's many ways to graph. I see now the connection with the equation and the points on the graph. It's kind of cool that it's that way. Yeah. Is it always going to be like a graph that every single x? It's always y over x. So it's always like up or down? Yes. Okay. Well, you can go, I like to do, I like to do the x's first because that's just the way I've been doing it. I'm going to go one to the right, but then two down. So the, I'm just going, this is my path, and your path was this way. Guess what? We end up in the same place. 
that's us. That's that's the picture. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a handout, and we'll work on this together. These are our notes. And yes, I'm going to collect your blue packet. I went over everything, so it should all be there. If you need to go home, because I'll save this as a PDF and write down what I wrote and give it to me tomorrow, that's okay. Oh, sure. You want to do that? Thank you. If you're not done, you need to get it done. Yes. Well, you have some time to work on it. We're going to work on this. We never have homework in here unless you don't use your time in class. So we will do a couple problems off this pink one. i got to find a smart board for it, though. I'm hoping, it, you know, even though you learned it last year, is it making a little more sense this year? And maybe not. Well, we're going to work on it. Because it kind of, it is very abstract. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we're going to do is put these numbers into the equation, and then we're going to graph them. Everybody got a, a pink sheet now? Yes. It's going to take me a second to bring up my new smart board. Because I could just make one, too, <laughs> which is what I just did. And then we're going to write equations of lines, too. And that's going to be the tough part. No, I don't want that. That's not even the right thing. Tip, this is it. I'm going to just make one. I think I'll just make one. Okay, sorry, it'll take me a second. Is that the same one? Let me see. Excuse me. Let me see. Let me see. I want to see if it's the same one. No. I remember having trouble finding these yesterday. Yeah. There it is. Oh, yeah, I do. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Okay, I'll have a slide here about two seconds. But at least that's the plan. Okay, there we go. Maybe. So you guys try it while I'm getting ready here. There. I want it in the same name. You forget. That's right, you do yeah, forget. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is write y equals mx plus b. And some people are ahead of me, which is great. So we're going to write the equation of the line. So y equals mx plus b. And it says that m equals 3, and the y-intercept is, is 2. Why did I do that? Because what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag this down here. That's 3, and that's 2. Okay, Josh? So what's the equation look like? It looks like y equals 3x plus 2. So one goal here is to be able to write the equation. Remember, that's going to be a, this is the equation that represents all these points we're going to graph. Because there's no way I can graph them all. I mean, I can write them all. Okay, so where do we begin? Michael, where do we begin? No There's no negatives. We're doing A. 
two. So one, two. Can you guys all see? Put a point there. Once you've got your point, you don't know how to do the rest, right? You just test it on it. Quiz on it. Slope is m is equal to 3 over what number? 1. So I'm going to start here and do what? Up 3 and go over 1. There you go. You get better lines if you do more points. Two points, unless you have a ruler. And even with a ruler, you can be off a little bit. Should we do B? And this is all, oh, if, if we don't finish today, no problem. We come back, we'll work on it more tomorrow. Because you're very good today, by the way. So what's the equation here? Y equals something times X plus something. And this is going to be the M, and this is going to be the B. So Josh, what am I going to put in here for the slope? This should be the easy part. 4. And what's the Y-intercept? Negative 5. Very good. Okay, so now we have to go and graph that. I could have graphed it first. Where are we going to begin? Negative 5. Does that help? So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to begin there. That is an ordered pair. Now I'm going to use my slope, which is 4. How can I write 4 as a fraction, Gabe? 4 over 1. So what am I going to do? Start here and count 1, 2, 3, 4, and then to the right. One. I want a good graph. I'm going to do it again. One, two, three, four, one. All those other points in between are ugly numbers. <laughs> one, two, three, four, one. And unfortunately, as some of you know in, in physical science, real numbers in the real world are ugly. They're decimals. Okay, are we, do we get how to do this? Is, there, is everybody feeling okay with how to do it? Okay, let me know. I'll, I'll help you individually. So we'll go ahead and work on this. You may get it done today. I don't know. So that you have an idea how to do that. And then we'll, we can finish this tomorrow too if we don't finish today. How do you find the slope of this line? First of all, let's do the easy thing. Where, where does this begin? What number, Mike? This is number 9. Or it's G. Excuse me, it's a G. Uh, it's 2. So now, how do you find the slope? You're going to start where you begin, and you're going to do what? Go down two, and you're going to go to the right one. What's the slope then? Which one goes on top? Negative two over one. It's always the rise over the run. Could we have defined slope as run over rise? Sure, we could have done that, but we wouldn't agree with the rest of the world. That's a little bit of a problem. Because somebody, a long time ago, before the United States even existed, said, we're going to do it this way. I didn't make it up. I said, okay, I'll do that. So what's the equation? It's y equals something times x plus b. What's the slope? Careful here. Negative 2. And what's the y-intercept? 2. Could you have written it this way? y equals the y-intercept first, 2 plus the slope, which is a negative 2. Yeah. The reason why I write it this way is because some of you just kind of get in the habit of always taking the first number you see. So if I put the slope term first, then you will be in good shape. But that's not necessarily a smart way to do it. So did I answer your question? Okay, good.